Hello scientists, this is the walkthrough video for lab 5 from Take Home Physics. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Google Sheets and this will be our data collection system. It's always good to set up your data collection system before you start the lab. Let's title this Physics Lab 005 Data Collection. This data collection system is going to have a lot of columns in it. The first one will be for our height in meters. I'll be dropping a marble from two different heights. Now I can't measure in meters, I can only measure in centimeters, so I'm going to make another column for the height in centimeters. I'm going to measure how much time it takes for that marble to fall, those different heights, and I'm going to take my measurements in seconds, and I'm going to take three measurements. I want to calculate the average time of those three trials in seconds. And then I also want to calculate the average speed of the marble on the way down, and that'll be in meters per second. I also want to calculate the final speed of the marble, so that would be how fast the marble is going right before it hits the ground. I'll also calculate that in meters per second. I want to know how fast the rate at which the marble is speeding up, and that's the acceleration, which will be in meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. I'll be dropping the marble from two different heights, first from two meters, and then from 1.5 meters. And like I said, uh, I only have a ruler that measures in centimeters, so I'm going to convert all of these meters to centimeters. There are 100 centimeters in a meter, so I'm going to multiply that 2 by 100. And I'll do the same thing for 1.5. Now all my meters are converted into centimeters. Great. To calculate the average time for those three trials, I'm going to make a formula equals average, open up parentheses, highlight or select those three cells, close the parentheses and press enter. That will calculate the average time. Copy and paste that formula into the cell below. To calculate the average speed in meters per second, speed is change in distance over change in time. And so that'll be my height divided by the average time from the three trials. And that'll be my average speed. Copy and paste that formula into the cell below. Now if something starts at rest and accelerates constantly, then the final speed is the average speed times 2. And copy and paste that formula into the cell below. To calculate acceleration, that's the change in speed over time. And so since we started at rest, that'll just be the final speed divided by the average time. And that will give us the acceleration. Copy and paste that formula into the cell below. Brilliant. Let's, uh, let's resize these columns. Just double click on the edges of those columns and that will resize them. And I actually want to do two other calculations. The first one is called percent error. This will tell me how close our experimental value is to the actual value. And I want to know how close our acceleration is to the actual gravitational acceleration on Earth. So to do that, you take the absolute value of your experimental value minus the actual value, which is 9.8. I want to divide that again by the actual value, 9.8, and multiply by 100. That'll give me a percent error. So if we're perfect and we get a cap an acceleration of 9.8, percent error will be zero. If we're off by a little bit, and we get 10, notice we're, we're off by about 2%. So that'll tell us how accurate we are. And I'm going to take the percent error for 
both of my uh, different heights. So copy and paste that formula into the cell below. And then the second calculation I want to do is I want to know how close my two accelerations are. They should be the same because uh, both of these trials are happening on Earth. So it should be the same gravitational acceleration. Uh, to figure out how close my values are, I'm going to do a calculation called percent difference. And this will be a measurement of precision. Okay, I'm going to merge those cells. I just want one calculation. So that's the absolute value of my two acceleration calculations, my experimental values, divided by the average of those two experimental values, and then multiply by 100. This will tell me how close my two experimental values are. They should be exactly the same if I'm perfectly precise and I'll get a percent difference of zero because they're not different at all. But we'll see what happens when we actually do the experiment. I'm just going to go ahead and center everything, make it look nice and neat. And our data collection system is ready to go. Let's get our materials. So you need your ruler. Remember we're going to be using the centimeter side of the ruler. And what else do we need? Ah, some tape, clear plastic roll of tape. We need three marbles, three glass marbles, all the same size, preferably. That's one, that's two, and that's three. And notice that I put them in that clear plastic tape roll so they don't roll away. You need a pair of scissors to cut the tape. You need a pen, or if you have a marker, that works too, either or. You need a pie pan or something that's going to make a loud noise when the marble hits it. You need an old towel or a sweater or t-shirt. You need a timing device and uh, to reach those taller heights you might need a stool or uh, maybe even a, a chair to stand on but just be careful. Okay let's go ahead and grab that clear plastic roll of tape and then your scissors and we are going to create some height markers for ourselves. We don't want to write on the walls. Uh, so I'm going to cut a one and a half strip, one and a half inch strip of tape here, just like that. And I'm going to cut two of them because we're going to be dropping the marble from two different heights. Okay, I'm going to leave that roll of tape there so I can put my marbles in it, but I'll put my scissors away. Go ahead and grab your ruler. Remember, we're using the centimeter side. And there are 30 centimeters in one standard ruler. Now I'm a teacher, so I have a meter stick. This is one meter, 100 centimeters. And if you're using a smaller ruler, that would be one, two, three, and 10 more centimeters, about a third of a ruler. So three and one third rulers in one meter. So go ahead and take your ruler, measure from the ground, and we want to measure 150 centimeters. 150 centimeters. So that's three, four, five rulers. Five times 30 centimeters, 150 centimeters. Put a piece of tape there. All right, so that's five rulers. Go ahead and grab your ruler, measure 50 more centimeters. So that's one ruler and then 20 centimeters more. And that's 200 centimeters. Go ahead and grab your marker and label those 1.5 meters and 2 meters. You might need a stool or a chair for this one. Okay, go ahead and grab your pie pan, grab your towel, fold it up if you want to. Just try to make it uh, nice and flat and stick that pie pan on top of the towel. That way when the marble hits it'll soften the blow and hopefully that marble won't jump out. Put the towel on the ground and then go ahead and put the pie pan on the ground as well. And then get your marbles and let's go ahead and test this out. The marble should make a nice sound like this. Nice, perfect. Okay, grab your stool, grab your chair if you need it. Be careful. Grab your timer and we're going to drop the marble three times from a height of two meters, and we're gonna time how long it takes. 
and I'm entering my data into my iPad. If you have a notebook or a piece of paper, that works too. Okay, now I'm gonna drop the marble three times from a height of 1.5 meters. Time how long it takes. I'm listening for the sound of the marble hitting the pie pan. That's how I know when to stop the timer. Okay, time to clean up. Take your tape off the wall so your family doesn't get mad at you and then make sure you put all your materials back in your kit. So that's the ruler and your scissors, the three marbles, the roll of tape. Also put your marker and pen away, put that pie pan back in the kitchen, put away the towel, maybe clean the tape residue off the walls, put that stool back, and then uh, put that chair back in the kitchen too. And then go ahead and put your data collection system away. Okay, let's analyze our data. We have a lot of unnecessary decimal places there, so I'm gonna round everything to just two places past the decimal to the hundredths place. There we go. So our, our data collection system did all the calculations for it. It cal calculated our average time, our average speed, uh, the final speed of the marble right before it hit the ground, and then uh, it also calculated our accelerations too. Nice. Now the actual value is about 9.8 meters per second per second, so we were off a little bit. Uh, and if you look at our percent error, we were off by 28% and then 20%. So not too accurate. We might consider doing the experiment again, uh, but considering the experimental setup, it's not too bad. But you, uh, you want to go for a little bit better percent error there. Percent difference is lower. Uh, that means that our experiment was pretty precise, actually. All right, good work. See you, scientists.